Well, hello, my beauties. I miss my dolls so much. Merry belated Christmas and happy, happy New Year's. I'm so grateful that you could join me today as I show you how to install crochet braids and achieve maximum versatility. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and thumbs up this video because I have some awesome goodies for 2018 starting right now with part one of the most versatile crochet braids you've ever seen. Now, I know that you wouldn't want to watch an hour long video, so I'm going to break this down into three parts. Part one will focus on the braiding pattern. This is the perfect pattern for stylists who have clients who need a great protective style and like a lot of variety and options. If you have no experience braiding your own hair, this may not seem beginner friendly, but I promise you there will be some useful tips for you as well. I like to begin by installing a braid around the perimeter of my head. This will be essential for disguising the crochet, making them look natural when the hair is pulled up. I begin on one side and follow the curve around my ear. I then part straight across the nape and continue the braid. Once I get to the other side, I again follow the curve around my ear and braid down. Once I've made it to the bottom, I connect the two braids into one. One way I know for sure I will wear the style is with a middle part. So I start by making a part down the center of my head and use it as a guide for the rest of the braids. Working with half of my head at a time, I part a nice section from the front of my head. I make a part about where I would like my right side part to be. It may be just a little off, but it will be close enough. I use my fingers as a guide for the size that I would like my braids. So I will have about three braids on one side and two on the other, give or take depending on the size of the head. From here, we're just going to braid straight back until we've reached the side part. CJ, no. No. Once you've reached the part, you want to ensure that the part is neat and the two braids around it are small. It's okay if the braids in between the parts are a little bigger, but the braids around the parts need to be small and neat for an easier disguise. Here, just to ensure the braid around my middle part will be small, I go ahead and part that off first. And then the remaining hair that's left, I just braid it all back as one. So in the end, all of these braids are technically going straight back, but it's all about the size of them that's going to make the difference. Thank you. 
this is what we have so far and as you can see I ended up with six braids instead of five because well of course I have a big head so again we're going to do the same thing on the other side I'm gonna start off by finishing off that middle part remember that we want this braid to be small I'm then going to estimate where I want my left side part to be and from there I'll continue to braid the braids just as before. Now as for the back, the first few braids will go straight back following the curve of your head. Always pull the end of the previous braid into the next as you braid down. We want to end up with only one braid when it's all over. Now once you've reached the section where your right part will be, instead of going straight back, we're going to cross the two braids and make an X. To do so, you're just going to make a part as usual down to the nape of the neck. But instead, you're going to grab the braid on the opposite side and connect it as you continue to braid down. Again for the middle, we're going to cross the two braids and make an X. These X's are what gives your style the most versatility. You can have as many crosses as you would like to have. It just helps to conceal the parts behind the hair and gives a more natural looking part. CJ knows. Now for my left side part, I wasn't completely sure how deep I wanted the part, like if I just wanted it slightly 
to the side or if I wanted it all the way to the side and then the bangs to hang completely over. So I decided to connect three braids and then I'll figure it out later. So to do that, I just parted down the center of the three braids, which is down the center of the middle braid. And then I took the two outer braids and connected them together before I continued to braid down the back of my head. At this point, I didn't want a thick, bulky braid close to the side of my head. I wanted the final braid to be more towards the center of my head. So I decided to go ahead and braid down the two side braids. Here is where I connected that perimeter braid that we initially did at the very beginning. So now, yes, the final braid. You guys, my arm was burning so bad. But here is where I connected those last two ends that were hanging and I ended up with this one braid which I just tucked away in the back of my head. But you can crochet it down or sew it down whichever one you like. You should end up with something similar to this. Of course you can go straight back with your braids if that's easier for you but I found that this pattern gives you so many more styling options. Make sure you're on the lookout for part two, where we'll go step by step through hair, location, volume, crochet techniques, and so much, so much more. And I'll even give you a glimpse at part three. But that's all I have for now. Love you dolls.